it is abundantly clear to me that uh, for us to meet the needs and the shared goals of a changing world of protecting and preserving our environment and ensuring that all people have access to sustainable development, we must not continue with the traditional methods of energy production, storage, and consumption. Clean Equity Monaco brings together clean tech inventors, investors, entrepreneurs, legislators, and hard-nosed venture capitalists. I really believe in the power of bubbles, and, you, and that will sound heretical to you, but bubbles do work, and you make all your money in bubbles. Development technology requires investors, and it requires long-term investors. Long-term investors will not invest long-term if every two years government changes policy. You know, I have come to the view that, I, that there are no long-term investors. I can't find a long-term investor. The annual Clean Equity Monaco event aims to give a helping hand to the pioneers in green technologies. What we do is we take companies at the very early stage of life. Goldman Sachs and Merrill Lynch and, and, and uh, Morgan Stanley get interested when the career chief executive comes in that they can actually talk to. My job is to protect the entrepreneur so you know, when he gets to the big, nasty, hairy banks, that uh, he still owns a part of his company. Here at the fourth Clean Equity Conference in Monaco, there's an optimism about the long-term prospects for clean tech industries. However, there's some sort of frustration about a resistance in the marketplace. The immediate prospect for clean tech innovators is gloomy, with big business preferring to stick to safe bets. The economic crisis has closed the doors on easy investment, and with government coffers empty, startup subsidies and incentives are stagnating. There seems to be no immediate relief in sight. We're not post-crisis now. We're simply living the reality of the financial crisis from 2008. So the ability for the public sector in 2011-12 to provide that upfront financing, the soft financing, the credit, the tax rebates for clean tech is stressed. Despite the recession, investment in cleantech industries is increasing, with Bloomberg reporting $243 billion invested in 2010, up 30% from 2009. The volume of money going into cleantech has held up reasonably well in the face of decline everywhere. So I don't think it's right to see clean technology as a problem area for investment because of the experience of the last two years. I just know very directly from my own experience how hard it has been to raise money of any kind and how difficult it's been to shift incumbents away in marketplaces that are still heavily dominant by big players, energy being the most obvious. Much of the new investment has been coming from China and the other emerging BRIC markets. George Frampton, who was co-chairman of President Obama's Environmental Quality Transfer Team, told the delegates that with the US legislature in gridlock, it's easier for China's one-party state system to implement new green policies, including ideas that were inspired by U.S. policy teams. They're going to have carbon taxes. They're going to pioneer a lot of these devices that the rest of the world uh, you know, hasn't quite gotten to as a global deal, but it's going to be you know, in a more regional or fragmented way. However, for the venture capitalists, government intervention is not the answer. For them, the market will be driven by technologies such as electric cars when they can compete with the reliability and convenience of existing carbon-driven technologies. I think with regard to government intervention and government support, shall we call it, always useful to have that. But at the heart of the story must be that clean tech solutions genuinely can offer economic benefits, if not now immediately, in the very near term. The winner of the Stelios Foundation grant was Solar Press who have developed cost-effective solar panels that are simple to produce and can reach the market quickly. Consumer-facing, low-cost, big market, solar business, and I've chosen Solar Press, the company with the flexible solar panels. In our, our company, we've tried to be um, very different in our focus, to have a much more shorter-term ramp to manufacturing to bring in revenues on a much shorter time scale with a focused product portfolio, uh, and to do that with much more lower cost manufacturing base. Set Venture Partners have invested in solar technology. Investment manager Yvette Go explains what ticks the boxes on her company's checklist. 
Uh, are there typical clean tech investment criteria, which is, is there a market, is there a unique technology, and is there a management team, which is very important. Uh, and, you know, there's the financial phase, does it fit our business model as well? Once you have an innovative green product concept to bring to market, getting access to the corridors of power in government and business is vital. Wendell Verbeek of the Brunswick Group says it's not so much a case of lobbying, but of communication. We understand who the opinion influences are. We understand what the views are in, in those important corridors. We understand the policy that might have an impact on, on a company or a sector or a country. The messages they need to get across, who they need to get those across to, and how. So we will do the help on the thinking as well as the execution. The trend for smart money is inevitably moving towards clean tech industries, but there is still inertia for invested interests to overcome. And the buzz at Clean Equity 2011 was for investment in energy efficiency products that save emissions into the atmosphere and from wallets. Smart policy and smart money and smart capital understand that the, the shift towards a low carbon economic growth model is happening. I think there's a very promising future ahead, but I don't underestimate the difficulties of breaking into markets where there's a lot of inertia and a lot of power, both political and economic power, vested in the incumbents. All Western governments should overnight say, we want to encourage private investment into this sector, and in order to do that, we will say to you, we will not charge you any capital gains tax for the next 25 years. Essentially, wherever you look in the world, there are bags of cash lying on the table and they've got energy efficiency written on them. So energy efficiency, energy conservation, the technologies, the metering around that, I think is a huge growth potential.